Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and October is LGBT History Month. So for today's video, I thought that I would recommend a few things that focus on LGBT history. Um, I am going to be talking about books, of course, but I will also be mentioning some documentaries and podcasts as well. Most of these recommendations will be focused around the United States because that is um, the history that I know best and have recommendations for. I'm going to start off talking about kind of LGBT history in general, uh, books and things that focus on a specific era or about specific people, and then at the end I'll talk a little bit about like LGBT representation um, and that kind of intersecting with history because I have some recommendations for that specifically as well. I will say I do have a whole TBR that's focused around LGBT history, so if you are interested um, in more books, definitely check that out. I haven't read all of them, obviously, but it's still more um, for you to look at. The first books that I'll be talking about for this category I have not read all of, but I have read part of them and I do plan on reading the rest. The first one is probably going to be the easiest to kind of get into and enjoy if you're not really used to reading. Um, kind of more dense academic things, and that's going to be Pride, the LGBT rights movement, a photographic journey. So this has a lot of pictures, a lot of really cool things going on, but you also have articles about these different historical people. There's some stuff about films and events as well. Um, this is just a really good time overall. I've flipped through it and read a few of the um, articles and it's really great. Uh, this could be a good starting point. And as a bonus, if the jacket weren't already great enough, it's also a whole rainbow if you take the jacket off. So it also doubles as some extra gay decor. Next I have the book Gay New York, Gender, Urban Culture, and the Making of gay the Gay Male World from 1980 to 1940. So this is going to be a pretty big chunk of time kind of earlier on. Now I have not read this from cover to cover but I did read a few chapters um, because I used part of it for my thesis. I needed the historical backdrop for LGBT language and this had some good stuff in it. Um, this is, like the title says, focused on um, kind of gay male culture. Um, so there is that. None of the books that I have um, specifically look at the lesbian community or um, sapphic women because that is an area that I still need to read more about, but if you check out my TBR, like I mentioned, you'll find more like that. But I do have a couple of books that focus specifically on trans history. Susan Stryker's Transgender History is another one that I have read excerpts of um, for that same research. And this is a really wonderful history book, and it is Own Voices History, which I think is um, extremely valuable. And the same goes for Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity. So this looks specifically at gender and race, um, and kind of how those oppressions have um, coincided, and how Black gender nonconforming people have been treated throughout history specifically. This is a lot more dense than some of the other books. Um, like with these, I feel like most people could read them and get a fair amount out of them. With this, this is one that I'm having to kind of take my time with because it is a little bit more academic, but um, the bit that I have read of it is still really great. So I would thus far definitely recommend it. Now the next recommendation that I have that covers a broad span of history is not just a book but it is also a podcast, and I have mentioned this numerous times on my channel, and that is Making History. This is the first edition of Making Gay History. Um, Making Gay History is also the name of the podcast. This is an, um, or a collection of oral histories from 1945 to 1990 that looks at people who were in the gay movement around this time. I've sung this book and that podcast project a lot of praises. I think oral histories are extraordinarily valuable, um, so I would definitely check that out. Another podcast that I would definitely recommend is Into the Vaults, which is a podcast that focuses on trans history. Each of uh, the podcasts focuses on a different trans figure in history. 
and a lot of the episodes they even have recordings of these different figures that they focus on. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to all of them, but what I have listened to is really wonderful. The next selections that I have are going to be for focused on a more specific time period, and a lot of these are going to be straight from people who were there living at the time, much like the Oral History Project Making Gay History, although that kind of covers the broad span of time like I've already mentioned. I'm going to go in roughly chronological order. Most of what I have to recommend is going to be focused, you know, between the 60s through the 90s, just because that's um, where I've been focusing on. The first recommendation that I have is Screaming Queens, which documents the Compton's Cafeteria Riot that happened in 1966. Um, it also touches on um, a couple of other things, but that was really its main focus. Now, when people think about the LGBT community and riots um, or revolts against the police, they think um, Stonewall. And Stonewall was a huge event, but it was not the first of its kind. The Compton Cafeteria Riots happened in 1966, and the Cooper's Donuts Riot happened in 1959. So there is a legacy of people fighting back against the police. Trans and gender non-conforming people have been historically the people who have been the ones standing up and fighting back, largely because they were more likely to be targeted. So in this documentary, they talk about the events they pull from like newspaper articles and whatnot, but a big piece of it is them interviewing people who were there. The next recommendation that I have is a book, and that is the Stonewall Reader, which was edited by the New York Public Library. I have not read all of this, but again, I've read pieces, and this isn't necessarily like one specific event, but it is focused around Stonewall and it's specifically looking at the before and after. So it's kind of looking at the impact of Stonewall. And this is an anthology that includes different essays and speeches from a number of different people who were LGBT activists at the time. Looking at this era in history, I did want to point out a film about Marsha P. Johnson, who was one of the people who was at the Stonewall riots. There are a few different um, documentaries about her. One of them I plan on watching this month, and two of them I've already watched, uh, but one I would recommend over the other. So the one that I would honestly recommend is called Pay It No Mind, and it is on YouTube for free. It is not super like highly polished, but the majority of it is literally just interviews with people who knew Marsha and uh, clips of Marsha herself. And um, it kind of talks about Marsha's history some, and you get, from what I can tell at any rate, a fairly clear picture of Marsha P. Johnson. The other documentary that I have seen but would recommend less is called The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson, and that is one that I think more well known. And while there is a lot of interesting stuff in there, and it does tell you a lot about her death, I personally had some issues with it. They kind of framed it as a murder mystery, which is uncomfortable, to say the least, um, and kind of disrespectful. But also they erased the fact that she had HIV and the fact that she was a sex worker. They even talked to other people who were sex workers at the time who told stories about um, specific things that Marsha did, like when they were out in the streets and stuff like that, and they still skirted around the fact that she was a sex worker. They also mentioned the fact that she worked with AIDS groups like ACT UP, um, but then they don't talk about the fact that she was HIV positive. So that was a problem for me as well. And to kind of add to all of this, there was also an issue around the time that it came out where the director of someone else who was also doing a documentary on Marsha B. Johnson accused that director of stealing some things from her. Um, this was especially problematic since the director of The Death and Life of Marsha B. Johnson is a white cis man, and the other documentary is directed by a black trans woman. And that is actually the film that I plan on watching this month, which is Happy Birthday, Marsha. And this has some aspects of it that is film, and then some aspects that is footage from my understanding. So if you are interested in learning more about Marsha B. Johnson, there are a few avenues for that. Next, I'm going to be moving on to the 80s, 
and I have a lot of books that I want to read on this period of time. Um, if you want to check out my HIV and AIDS history TBR, those are the books that I'm going to read for that. And while I have read a couple from it, um, they're not really ones that I'm going to necessarily put on this uh, just because one of them was super academic and the other one was more focused on disability studies than LGBT history. But if you're interested in those, I will put links um, where you can access them. But I do have a couple of documentaries that I would definitely recommend. The first is United in Anger, which is a look at ACT UP, which was what, the biggest um, direct action oriented um, AIDS organization at the time. And this has footage from tons of people who were involved in it. There were lots of interviews. There's footage from um, the different demonstrations that they had and stuff like that. And it actually walks you through a timeline. Now, United in Anger isn't on as many platforms, but I'm fairly certain that it's still available on YouTube. So that should be pretty easy to get to. Another documentary that looks at the 80s and the HIV and AIDS movement is We Were Here. And this doesn't specifically look at one group, but it does talk with a number of people who were involved in the HIV and AIDS movement. There are um, some people, I think most of the people that they interview were in the LGBT community. Now, I will give you a warning uh, for both of these documentaries, but especially for We Were Here. It's really devastating. Um, obviously the HIV and AIDS epidemic was not a very happy time, but they talk very candidly about their experiences and watching all of the people around them die. So go in expecting a lot of heavy stuff. Keeping on in the 80s, the next book that I have is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. This is not one that I have read all of, but I have read sections of it and I'm planning on reading it this month, in fact. In a lot of her writings, Audre Lorde talks about being black, being a lesbian, being a mother, being a cancer survivor. Um, so there is a whole lot packed into this. So it's not exclusively LGBT history, but the reality of LGBT history, as well as any other marginalized history, is that there are people who are sitting in intersections of multiple marginalizations, working with um, multiple groups to achieve liberation and Audre Lorde was one of those people. Um, she is absolutely not the only person you should be looking at, um, but this book in particular is one that I have read some from, um, and it's the book that I'm, one of the books that I'm going to be reading this month. Moving on a little bit further into the 90s, I have Trans Liberation by Leslie Feinberg, and this was published in the late 90s, so most of the speeches and essays were um, done a little bit before then. I talk at length about this book in one of my other videos, but it says so much important stuff about solidarity um, within the LGBT community, but also between communities. So this is one that I definitely, definitely think that you should read, especially if you're interested in looking at firsthand accounts of LGBT history. Now, the final category of things that I'm going to be recommending for LGBT History Month is looking at the media. Now the first recommendation that I have for that is the most obvious, and that is The Celluloid Closet. Um, there is a documentary of it, which I have watched. It is based off of a book, which I have not read, so I can't necessarily vouch for or know very much about other than what the documentary has to say. But the documentary is pretty good. Um, it has a lot of really interesting stuff that talks about the history of um, censorship in film and different things like that and LGBT representation through history. And it goes in and interviews a lot of different LGBT people who have been a part of film. And similar to that, there is the more recent documentary Disclosure, which focuses specifically on trans representation, which is something that was kind of mentioned in the celluloid closet, but definitely was not a focus. So Disclosure goes through and interviews trans people who are involved in film and talks about that history of trans people in film. My final recommendation doesn't just focus on film, but there is a large piece throughout it that talks about trans representation in film and culture and in history, and that is Trans Like Me by C.N. Lester. So this has a lot of um, 
really important things and I think it can give a lot of perspective into um, how trans people have been treated. And even though this isn't specifically a history book, I think that this gives us some important context uh, through which to understand some of that history. And that's in general why knowing about the media is important too, because even though like looking at the history of LGBT people in film isn't necessarily the same as looking at like Stonewall or something like that, film helps shape uh, a ton of what the general public kind of thinks about people. So it's really important to talk about. So those are all the recommendations that I have for this video. If you have any LGBT history books that you really enjoyed, let me know about them down in the comments. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye.